first, thank you, the organizer, uh, um, to give me a chance to present uh, in this very nice conference. Uh, so uh, my name is Jay Wang from the Temple University. Uh, today I will talk about the uh, generalized number levels and uh, implication to more uh, non-billion more fractionalization. Uh, so this is the outline of my talk. Uh, um, so uh, the key point is that I will try to generalize the notion of Landau levels, um, uh, including lowest Landau level to all Landau levels, um, from the uh, um, uh, to include uh, the non-uniform barrier curvature and the broad uh, boundary condition. So the key line in such generalization is the quantum geometry, uh, which I'll quickly review, and and uh, it will connect uh, similarly. Uh, two uh, very quite uh, um, different uh, uh, topics. One is the Kilo geometry, uh, which is very mathematical. Another is the uh, Mori material. Uh, so I will start with the uh, theory of the generalized another level and then talk about the uh, implications. So um, uh, um, generally speaking, the uh, um, topological and the geometry are central topics of condensed matter system. And uh, when we say topological properties, we, uh, we mean how the quantum states uh, uh, change globally in the parameter space. And the representative example of topological properties includes the chain number, uh, Z2 invariant, and Z uh, provides uh, insights in classifying the phase of matter. While um, uh, very differently, geometric properties are local properties defined in the parameter space. And, but they are uh, very important in many aspects. And the uh, representative example of geometric properties are, uh, for example, the uh, barrier curvature, which is a, gives us the gauge invariant phase when we do the uh, smooth variation in the momentum space, uh, in the parameter space in general. Another is the uh, notion of distance. Uh, so it measures how close uh, to, uh, how um, measures the similarity of the uh, quantum states when you um, change the parameter a little bit. So for example, here you can use the wave function uh, overlap uh, to define uh, a metric. Uh, this is called the quantum geometric tensor. And the quantum geometry uh, is a very active research direction in condensed matter. It uh, gives many important uh, uh, implications to the quantum materials. Uh, uh, for instance, the modern theory of polarization and the modern theory of magnetizations are all related to quantum geometric properties. And uh, the Berry dipole of quantum metric gives the uh, intrinsic mechanisms to the linear uh, and the nonlinear anomalous transport. And for the fresh quantum Hall system, uh, there are a lot of discussions about the geometric response and uh, the cutting modes. Uh, and, and recently, uh, there are also uh, many interesting work uh, about the uh, optical conductivities and their relation to quantum geometries as they give to the uh, universal bounds and so on. And the quantum geometry is also um, provides insights about uh, the origin of superconductivity or coherence in the fair band system. So arguably, the quantum geometry are particularly more important in narrow band systems such as Mori materials because of the suppression of the uh, conventional contribution from dispersions. And today I will talk about the quantum geometry uh, implication to fractional chain solicitors. So uh, we have uh, now uh, a very versatile platform for creating topological flat band and uh, intacting system. And uh, the first experimental surprise comes from the observation of superconductivity in twisted barrier graphene. Uh, that follows the uh, theoretical prediction of narrow band uh, like uh, more than 10 years ago. Uh, so uh, in the twisted body graphene system, we not only have seen superconductivity, but see many other interesting intacting driven uh, phases, uh, for example, correlated change of liters, uh, finite temperature phenomena, and so on. And Besides, uh, and in, in fact, the Moray uh, twisting and stacking is a very general idea that creates flat bands. Uh, for example, uh, we can also engineer um, TMD system by twisting and stacking. And TMD has also its own unique properties. For example, the, uh, its, its optical properties and, uh, and uh, its reduced degree of freedom that allows us to use the 
uh, different experimental methods to detect the correlated phase in TMD. And it's worth to mention that there are uh, very interesting uh, experimental progress in Mori TMD, uh, like uh, the discovery of multi insulator metal insulator transitions, condom lattice, and so on, and the recent superconductivity, and so on. So, uh, as Shadow mentioned, uh, it's, a, uh, uh, it's a surprise that in the TMD we have observed the fractional strain insulators, and in fact, uh, and a fractional strain insulator is not observed experimentally before. Uh, so fractional strain insulator, by definition, is a zero field version of fractional quant Hall effect, and it, this concept was proposed more than 10 years ago, and the previous studies uh, mostly focused on the tight bonding models, uh, but recently uh, the fractional strain insulator got uh, renewed interest in the more rare materials. So uh, because of the different energetics, fractional strain insulator can also call high temperature version of fractional quant Hall. And because of uh, the, uh, it, it doesn't require many fields, it can be more friendly to superconductivity and opens a room to create more exotic particles. And uh, so the uh, signature of fractional transistors at finite field has been reported in the Mori graphene systems. And since last year, there are a lot of progress. Uh, from uh, either the optical measurement and the transmodal measurement that confirms the fractional strain insulators in the twisted MOT2 material and also the multilayer graphene uh, uh, in contact with the HBN. So the fractional quantum hall is still the one of the most important guiding principle for designing fractional strain insulator in the Moray material. So it was to reveal the fractional quantum hall a little bit. So the hallmark of fractional quantum Hall is the uh, uh, Hall two at uh, that occurs at fractional filling, and and fractional quantum Hall is the classical example of topological order. Uh, it exhibits fractionalized particle as uh, its elementary excitations. So based on the statistics of particles, it can be divided into abelian or non-abelian classes. So besides the uh, gap the fractional quantum half phase, there uh, the uh, composite Fermi liquid, which is a gapless phase at even denominated free lane, is also a very interesting phase. Uh, it's a, a representative example of non-Fermi liquid, and it's a Fermi C of composite fermions, and has uh, uh, interesting Dirac uh, interpretations. And the composite Fermi liquid is also the pairing state for non-abelian phase, uh, and you can think of non-abelian phase as a pairing occurred on the composite fermions. And uh, so fresh quantum Hall has uh, many uh, uh, um, different fresh quantum Hall uh, phase that occurs under different conditions. Uh, one of them uh, is important uh, is the filling fractions. Uh, so within the fresh quantum par paradigm, uh, by this, I mean the, uh, we have isolated uh, topological flat band, and the intaction is much smaller than the band gap. So such that the uh, band mixing can be treated positively, then the uh, um, abelian fractional quantum Hall uh, is the most robust fractional quantum Hall phase uh, that can occur in the uh, low uh, Landau levels. Uh, and the composite Fermi liquid can occur in the half field uh, lowest null level, while uh, the non abelian phase is the most difficult one. It typically uh, can uh, uh, only occur in the first uh, half field first uh, Landau level under crew interaction. So, um, an important questions to uh, search for a fractional transistor in the Moray system is. The, uh, how we compare uh, the flat band and the Landau levels. Uh, for example, uh, in the left figure, I show a uh, uh, first principle calculation from the Deschamps group. And the first principle calculation can tell you the topological turn number of the uh, band. And then uh, the question is, how can I tell whether uh, such topological turn number, uh, to, uh, this flat band is uh, whether uh, such pattern uh, is representing the lowest, the first, the second and the level pattern. Uh, and such question is uh, important and meaningful because if our goal is to search for the non-billion phase and following the French one half paradigm, we need to half fill the second chain bands uh, rather than the top chain band. So knowing the uh, uh, um, 
how, uh, how to compare the fat band and the Landau level is an important uh, question. So it faces two difficulties. One is that the Landau level has different boundary condition as the topological bands. And Landau level has magnetic field, and you have magnetic translation symmetry, but topological band has block translation symmetry. Another is that yeah, Landau level is a uniform system, so it has quite uniform uh, quantum geometries. Uh, however, in topological bands, uh, the quantum geometry is usually very non-uniform. And, uh, but we keep in mind that uh, different Landau levels are distinguished not by the topology, um, but by their geometries. And in fact, for the uh, higher Landau level, uh, it's, it's uh, trace of its quantum metric uh, is increasing with the Landau level index. So this is also um, closely related to the fact that when you go to higher Landau level, the wave function becomes more and uh, 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 less and less concentrated, and this, uh, the real space spreading of the Landau level also determines the um, detailed structure of protected, uh, projected interaction, and this is responsible for why non-abelian state requires the first Landau level rather than the lowest level. So the uh, key message of here is that we will generalize the notion of Landau levels to allow the Bronck boundary condition and allow non-uniform direct curvature while preserving some uh, uh, key properties, for example, the orthogonality and complete basis. And importantly, uh, we will show that the generalized null level obeys the integrated uh, quantized trace formula. So uh, uh, it's for whatever non-uniform direct curvature, the uh, nth generalized Landau level uh, if we take a trace of its quantum metric and uh, integrate over the moment in space, we will get uh, 2n plus 1. And we will later talk about uh, why such new basis is useful in uh, more rare materials. What, what's more, what's more the oh, it's a two number c. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, the absolute value of two number c. So uh, let me first review uh, the lowest generalized null level. So uh, because the notion is very uh, closely related to the quantum geometries, uh, let me first review the uh, general properties of quantum geometries. So as I mentioned, there are two important geometric quantities. One is barrier curvature, another is quantum metric. Uh, generally speaking, uh, there is a geometric bound uh, called uh, the trace of the quantum metric is always lower bounded by the determinant and the lower bounded by the barrier curvature. So um, the physics of situating the geometric bound has already been considered uh, a couple of um, uh, almost 10 years ago. Uh, so uh, uh, the earlier reference has already hinted the importance of the so-called trace condition. The trace condition means that uh, for every momentum k, uh, the trace of quantum metric equals to barrier curvature. Uh, and it's equivalently written as integrated uh, trace of quantum metric is equal to the chain number. And for example, uh, in the Roy Lockwood's paper, uh, he proved that if you have trace condition and constant barrier curvature, uh, then you can recover the gerwin mcdonald Pratzman algebra, uh, which is a key algebra for Landau level uh, that, it, that is uh, fundamental to many uh, uh, physics in Landau levels. And also in the uh, Martins paper, uh, he uh, related the trace condition and the complex uh, feature of the wave function uh, for a number higher than one. And, but the uh, um, geometric meaning of the trace condition and its implication to the Moray materials and the fractal transistors uh, is only, uh, is only uh, highlighted recently. Uh, so um, as, we can, as, uh, as we know that, uh, we now know that uh, the trace condition uh, uh, is, uh, will, will directly imply that the Brock function um, to be a holomorphic function. By holomorphic, I mean uh, it's complex coordinate, uh, kx plus a ky, so it has a, a, a a Brock function to be a, a holomorphic dependence on the moment uh, on the momentum k, and and um, uh, and the trace condition uh, this holomorphicity uh, is can be seen from both the real sp uh, uh, momentum space as the uh, 
uh, holomorphic momentum dependence, as well as from the real space, from the notion of vertex ability. Uh, and the vertex ability allows one to explicitly construct uh, the uh, fractional quantum Hall type wave functions. Um, and this holomorphicity also uh, directly uh, fix the uh, wave function form of the band that, that satisfy uh, the trace condition. Uh, for here, as a representative example, uh, in the, uh, when you have chain number one, and uh, the wave function uh, must be written in this way, where the mk is a normalization, br is a factor, and the phi k is a lowest null level uh, wave function. And, and uh, the variability of the wave function form will directly imply that the trace condition is a sufficient condition for uh, exact fractional sensorators uh, if you have uh, exactly flat bands and short range interaction. Uh, but it was to emphasize that this is not a uh, condition for FCI um, because FCI is a robust uh, topological phase. It can exist. Um, in, uh, beyond bands that satisfy the trace condition. Uh, and uh, there are many concrete examples that FCI doesn't require trace condition. But it's true that the trace condition will directly imply FCI, so the trace condition is a sufficient condition for exact FCI ground state. So uh, we can call that the band that satisfies the trace condition as the ideal band. And the ideal bands exhibit the reversibility properties. And there is a more general concept called a variable band that, that uh, can, uh, uh, can exist even you don't have the trace condition, but still allows the fractional transitor exact ground state. So, uh, uh, and in fact, the, the uh, trace condition has been a use for uh, marker um, to uh, tell whether a band is, resembles the similarity to Rosenau level. Uh, and in fact, in the uh, experimental relative uh, relevant angles and the parameters, uh, the model calculation shows that the twisted MOT2 materials, its top band uh, is uh, at the angle uh, 3.7, uh, uh, around 3.7, satisfies the trace condition pretty well. And at the same time, uh, the band dispersion get minimized. Uh, so this uh, provides a theoretical insights about uh, the uh, occurrence of the uh, Laughlin type fractional uh, quantum Hall state and uh, half field uh, compass fermi liquid in the twisted MOT2 material. So uh, the Hamiltonian reason, uh, as also Shoto mentioned, is that uh, we can uh, Writes the twist MOT2 material Hamiltonian as uh, 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 quadratic dispersion electrons moving in the um, skirmion uh, field. And the skirmion represents the uh, interlayer and the uh, interlayer tunneling process. And uh, here uh, the figure plots the uh, skirmion profile looking in the real space. And if electron, the skirmion has a topological widening in the real space and the electron follows the skirmion patterns, will effectively see a magnetic field. Uh, so after proper transformations, you can bring this Hamiltonian back uh, to a very close, uh, to very close to a, a Hamiltonian moving in non-uniform magnetic field. So, uh, and the, uh, there are many other examples of the uh, generalized Lewis levels. And for example, in the uh, twisted uh, multi-layer graphene systems in the cow limit, you can and can show that the uh, the model at magic angle exhibit uh, exactly flat band of higher chain number, and and the uh, um, short range interaction uh, at proper fillings provide give you the exact man, uh, fractional sensor ground state. And in the uh, trilayer graphene system uh, can also, uh, in the cow limit, can also realize the uh, uh, generalized lowest level. Uh, and uh, another concrete system is uh, Dirac fermions in the periodic magnetic field, where you will see that your spectrum has uh, exactly flat zero mode bands. Uh, that's coming from the topology. And the, the uh, flat band wave function will satisfy the trace condition. 
And in addition, there's a tight bounding model called capital murder models. Uh, it's a variation of the Hofstadter model, uh, and its ground state also has satisfied the uh, trace condition. So because the uh, trace condition uh, directly implies the uh, uniform uh, general structure of the wave function and exact FCI, all these models share uh, same wave functions. And the message for experimentalists is that if you want to look for the uh, listener level physics in the flat band, try and then try to optimize the uh, geometric bound to achieve the trace condition. So uh, next I will talk about the generalization to higher Landau levels. And before going to the uh, concrete, uh, uh, more detailed theories, let me uh, give a one concrete, very concrete, but still simple construction of uh, higher generalized Landau levels. So as I mentioned, um, if we consider drug fermions in periodic magnetic fields, uh, uh, no matter how non-uniform the magnetic field is, it always has a zero mode, and such zero mode will abase a trace condition. And now we can consider a generalization we put uh, AB graphing, AB chirostat graphing uh, in the magnetic field. And such system, uh, will similarly have uh, two degenerate zero modes. And, and if we perform a uh, smith also organization of these two degenerate zero modes, we will can show that no matter how non-uniform the uh, magnetic field is, one of the zero modes will satisfy uh, uh, integrate trace equals to the chain number, and another is equal to the three times the chain number. And similarly, if you take ABC stacked uh, graphing, and consider the system in the periodic magnetic field, you get three zero modes, degenerate zero mode, and after Smith as organization, you get one, three, five sequence. And you can carry this procedure uh, uh, step by step and generate a set of bases by uh, Smith as organizing the zero mode space. And all these bases uh, and all this, uh, the, the state that's uh, obtained after this procedure uh, will have uh, exactly quantized uh, trace formula, no matter how non-uniform the magnetic field is. Just, just to make sure that we're linear. So here you, you pick a linear combination of the bands that minimizes the trace and achieves trace G equals C, and then you look at the orthogonal subspace and repeat. Uh, so in the you mean in the uh, AB graphing case, yeah. Um, in, in fact, in the AB graphing case, one of the band will be identical to the to the first. But, yeah. But if I'm given just the two space, uh, like the space of two bands, right? How do I pick the one? That, so um, I pick the one that has the two space. Yeah. So uh, in this construction, we we still need uh, we need to do this recursively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I will later talk about uh, more general construction. Uh, this is a very concrete example, yeah, to illustration. So, um, so generally, uh, so how to construct the generalized Landau level? We can first um, start with the standard Landau level uh, with the uniform magnetic field, uh, with uniform quantum geometries. Um, then, if we consider multiplying uh, its wave function by uh, by a common factor. Uh, which is the uh, BR factor. So if BR is a periodic function, the resulting band will still obey the magnetic translation symmetry. Uh, but if the BR is quasi-periodic, the resulting band can be block state. Uh, so uh, in, after, uh, in this step, we obtain an, a non-orthogonal basis uh, because the, uh, the BR is a modulation factor that breaks the orthogonality. So uh, then we do a Smith organization. We keep uh, the lowest bands uh, to be uh, identical. Then we uh, step by step uh, project out the lower band and get a sequence of orthogonal state. And you can show that uh, uh, either numerically or theoretically, you can prove that such states will ob ob uh, observe uh, will obtain the, uh, exactly quantized the trace uh, formula. So uh, the uh, the underlying uh, reason is the uh, the following. So the, for the generalized null level, uh, we can still use the later operator to go from one level to uh, the higher. For example, the uh, uh, increasing uh, operator 
will only take uh, the un minus one to un uh, at most, and the lowering operator will only take un to un minus one. Uh, however, the non-trivial geometric information uh, are encoded uh, in the uh, in the red market factor, which is a nominalization and an alpha. And the normalization and alpha are the uh, generalized, the standard later relation recursion that for the Landau level, for the usual Landau levels, and they encode all the non-trivial geometric properties of the system. And you can, uh, in our paper, we show that these non-trivial uh, parameters are uniquely and recursively determined from the uh, uh, N0K, okay, which is a normalization factor for the uh, ideal band. And secondly, we can show that for the nth Landau level, for the nth generalized Landau level, its barrier curvature and the trace of quantum metric has a very simple form determined from the normalization factors n n. So the uh, barrier curvature is a difference of two normalizations, and the uh, trace of quantum metric is the sum of two normalizations. And such observation will directly prove the quantized trace formula. And, and uh, we uh, emphasize that our uh, generalized uh, high Landau level obeys the high vertex stability condition, uh, which is, uh, essentially means, uh, means that uh, the lowest field uh, couple of generalized Landau levels is an ideal band. So, um, so uh, let me summarize the geometric meaning of the generalized Landau levels. Now we can uh, regard the ideal band as a holomorphic curve. Uh, which is, uh, 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 by saying it's a curve, it essentially means that it's a mapping from the complex torus, which is a complex dimension one, to the projective space. And, and the generalized higher general levels can be uh, regarded as the unitary moving frames, like velocity uh, and uh, accelerations that along this curve, and the um, the uh, Fernand Serret uh, equation that describes the uh, time dependence of the moving frame uh, uh, is the geometric meaning of the generalized later recursions. And uh, in fact, the uh, moving frame and holomorphic curve has been studied in the mathematical literatures uh, in the 1970s. So as I only have a few minutes, let me quickly mention the implication of generalized Landau levels. And uh, we'll focus on the non-abelian state. And the numerical hallmark of non-abelian state is the six-fold ground state degeneracy for even particle numbers. And here I mark the two energy scales. And delta G is the gap, and delta S is the ground state splitting. And uh, we will use uh, uh, the so-called UN-UM model, which is consisting of uh, mixing two generalized null levels to uh, perform the numerical calculations about the stability uh, to study uh, the uh, stability of the uh, uh, more rate state under non-uniform quantum geometries. And here, um, so you can show that the first row uh, captures, uh, uh, shows the gap as a function of the uh, superposition amplitude and the phase, and the second row uh, captures the ground state splitting. And you will see that uh, the moderate state is only occur in a very narrow window. Uh, so, uh, for example, the lambda is generally less than 0 0.1. So, in other words, the uh, um, the moderate state is a very weak, uh, a very fragile uh, uh, fractional change rate state that it requires a flat band to have the uh, first generalized Landau level to be the dominant wave function component. Uh, and of course, in our uh, calculation, we used single band projected uh, current calculations. So we can map out this uh, geometric properties and uh, obtain this uh, uh, um, this geometric conditions for the mode rate. So the red region is the uh, um, from the uh, is the region that allows the mode rate state obtained by using the generalized Landau levels. And it's plotted in terms of the uh, sigma omega, which is the barrier curvature standard deviation and integrated trace of the band. And we use the single uh, band uh, without any dispersions. Uh, so uh, our setup is already designed to maximize the likelihood of more rate state. So we can 
uh, we argue that the red regime we obtained is the widest uh, regime that for the Moray state. Uh, so indeed, uh, it's the red regime bounded uh, the literature, uh, the data, the magic data in the literature that uh, reported the uh, more risk data pretty well, and uh, these data are uh, available in uh, this reference, and many of them are motivated by the twisted MOT2 material. So we think that uh, uh, this red regime is a useful guidance for material design. So, if, for example, if your material is uh, has a, a, a geometric properties, the active band has a geometric property that is outside the red regime then the likelihood of obtaining the more state is pretty low. Uh, you can also see this, that uh, it's, uh, more rate is a very fragile and a very weak topological state. So in the end, I would like to uh, mention our collaboration with uh, Dishaw's group on the uh, twist MOT2 at small band. So the first principle calculation that which does not uh, rely on the continuum model and uh, shows uh, um, the consecutive topological chain band at small twist angles of twist MOT2, uh, and the red curve is from the one realization uh, which doesn't require the continuum model. So, uh, and um, consider a single band with projected uh, interactions uh, with, uh, and the exact analyzation will show uh, uh, strong evidence of the uh, non billion state, uh, if you consider the Hachivok renormalization effect of the band. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I think it's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, thank you for the nice talk and uh, no some questions. Yeah. Hi, G. Thanks for the talk. So my question is, suppose that I have a churn band and I integrate the quantum metric and I get something like 2.5. How do I know if that's a very not ideal lowest Landau level or a very close to ideal second Landau level or does it not really matter? Yeah, so it's a very uh, good question. So um, the statement is that if you have a band, you can integrate the trace, you'll find it's precise H number, then it's uniquely determined it's uh, lowest generalized not level. But if you get uh, its integrate trace equals to three or 2.5, even if you get it equals to three, it, it doesn't necessarily imply it's a first generalized lambda level. And because you can um, mix the lowest lambda level, for example, with a higher lambda level to get uh, trace equals to three. So here I want to emphasize that the uh, integrate trace is not the unique marker to tell you whether a band is a, uh, uh, a generalized lambda level or not. Uh, so the wave function, uh, co direct comparison of the wave function uh, is, is, the, is the answer, yeah. Okay, and can yeah. I ask one more question? So how do you determine the boundaries of the red region? So we know oh, three uh -huh. would be ideal, but yeah, how do you choose yeah. 2.8 or something? Yeah, like that? thank you. Uh, so this is a very important question that I uh, skipped. So here I, uh, here I introduced the two energy scale. One is the delta G, which is the gap between the ground state manifold and the excitations and delta S is a ground state splitting. So we determine the boundary of the uh, red regime by the condition that delta G becomes uh, equals to delta S. So, the, so in other words, the points inside the red regime uh, always have delta G larger than the delta S, which means that the phase is robust. But when the gap is smaller than the ground state splitting, we will, we will um, see it's not an obvious state. Hi, uh, another question from back here. Yeah. So I had a question about your ABC trilayer graphene uh, in periodic magnetic field. Oh, here? Uh, I think maybe oh, 140 okay. had the degenerate bands. Yes, those. Yeah. So would you expect some sort of like quantum Hall ferromagnetism analogy here if you start doping into these bands? Um, quantum Hall ferromagnetism? Um, so here I only consider the zero mode, so I haven't considered uh, thought about that. Yeah. All right, thanks.
So um, the generalized Landau level that you get depends on the choice of B of R, right? That's right. So if you want to, say, take a Moray band from a generic model and then decompose its wave functions in terms of generalized Landau level wave functions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that decomposition will depend on B of R. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. So is there a procedure to kind of be able to say, here's my Moray band, mm -hmm. this is its weight in the nth generalized Landau level unambiguously? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very good question. So, um, uh, so given a BR, we have a set of generalized Landau levels, uh, which is a complete and orthogonal basis. So, uh, so the basis set is a functional of the choice of B of R. So in other words, given any B of R, we can uh, use to decompose uh, any given uh, rock bands uh, or the bands in the magnetic field. Uh, so this is the first point. The second point that uh, intrinsically, I think your question is a variation of uh, question. So there exists an optimal B of R such that after the decomposition, um, it's uh, you, you can we, we can see that uh, its weight is is a, the uh, we can see we can define the decomposition coefficient C n, and is the distribution of different of a given band uh, on the different generalized levels. So the optimal V R should correspond to C n that is sharply peaked, uh, sharply peaked at some n, and this can um, this can um, can be considered as a quantitative way to uh, define whether a given band, uh, how, what's the Landau level index of a given band. I see, thank you. Um, I, I also had a question. So it, it seems, as a follow-up to Jen's question, um, if you have the trace condition equals to three, it could be a bad kind of first, land, a, a bad zeroth Landau level, or it could be very close to the first Landau level, and it seems this relies on being able to find the partner zero Landau level band. So if you can find that and you do this procedure, uh -huh. uh, yeah, you can know that it's first Landau level. So is there a way to do this? If I give you a band yeah. and it's trace is, is close to three, is there a way to know that it had a zero Landau level partner? Um, yes, so I think uh, your answer might be in the recursion relation. So uh, if you look at such a recursion relation, especially on the second line, you will see that the lowering operator, which is operating a momentum space derivative, uh, such lowering operator will, uh, will lower the index by one. So uh, suppose your, uh, your given band is a first generalized null level, then you carry out uh, this lowering operator by taking momentum space derivative, which is a very well-defined operation numerically and analytically. Uh, and you do organization with the input state. If you can see that the resulting state has this condition, then you can confirm your, your input state is the first generalized Landau level. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. So coming back to this question, um, for the boundary that you had, did you check? Yeah. Can you show me the N of K, right? Did you check that they're, in, they're, they're an incompressible that the N of K is uniform. Ah. Otherwise, the degeneracy is just, I can have a charge density wave. Yeah, 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 I think it's a, it's a good point. So for the time being, we, uh, we use the delta G and the delta S as a marker for the numerical correlation. We haven't located. So for example, the, for fitting minus three halves, there are predictions in the literature of delta, yeah. of this delta being larger, the splitting, and the N of K varies by 60%. So that's not a non-abelian state. Right, so I'm just, right. I'm just asking if you have an NFK. We okay. haven't do okay. this in our numerical calculation. It would be good to do. Yeah, 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 yeah I agree. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so when we talk about uh, this uh, generalized Landau level, we have this uh, integral equals to like some quantization number, but do we have expectations or the, on the uh, uh, geometry of the, let's say, the K dependence of G, trace of G? Do we expect it's uniform or oh, yeah, it doesn't it's, matter? Uh, it's not uniform. Uh, so, uh, so, the, um, so the generalized Landau doesn't require uniform quantum geometries. So, uh, and here uh, the point is that uh, the, the, the trace of G is, not, is, a, is a function of K, um, but uh, when you integrate that, it's, it's an it's a integer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
Um, more questions? Maybe I have a follow-up question on your how to optimize BR. So like, I think there's an intuition like in Landau level, we have some like uh, particle number matching with the local magnetic field. So is there a certain like relation there? Like if I imagine it's a Landau level, I can look at charge sensing and find the optimized BR for matching a Landau level. Um, right, so I think a general variational method um, of um, optimizing this, you can find, you maybe find this uh, paper from Function Wu useful. Uh, but what I can say is um, um, the exact statement is the following. So if you know that your input state is, is a mixing of a finite number of generalized law levels, if you, if you have this as an input condition, no matter uh, the number, uh, 10 or 11 or 100, but as long as it's a finite, then is there, there is a, a well-defined analytical and numerical way to exactly obtain the decomposition coefficient even though it's, it's very general, yeah. So you can find it in our paper. Yeah. Thank you. But uh, it's also worth to mention that uh, real material never satisfies this condition. It always has infinite number of generalized levels, yeah. Okay, I, I also have one more question. So, um, so for the ideal bands, there is a uh, not, not just the similarity to the Landau levels, but you can show that, you know, the pseudo-potential arguments go, so, so there is an analytical argument for why you get Laughlin states. Um, did you discuss that? So, so uh, just, just this, this quantized trace condition, does it give you any analytical guarantees? Um, um, I, uh, that, I, that I don't know, yeah. yeah. I, 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 perhaps no, yeah. Yeah, I think the, um, the, uh, uh, the, all the exact statements is uh, all occurs in the lowest level as as far as I know. So there's no exact statement about higher. Uh, yeah, yeah. But it's it's a good question. Mm. Uh, any more questions? Yeah. If not, then let's thank G again. Thank you.